Good morning, brothers and sisters. So some have asked me if it's possible to lose your salvation because Revelation 3 verse 5, Jesus promises to the church in Sardis, which is the dead church, that he will not blot out their names from the book of life, but will confess his name before his Father in heaven and before his angels. So does this mean that your name can be blotted out? Let's take a deeper look. The ultimate purpose of the book of life is to record the names of those who have trusted in Jesus Christ for their salvation. Since Christ's atoning sacrifice is the basis for our redemption, it is also referred to as the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 21 verse 27. Those whose names are written in the book of life are said to have their names written in heaven. Luke 10 verse 20. Or be registered in heaven. Hebrews 12, verse 23. This implies that the book is kept in heaven, and this is where we find its ultimate use at the end of history, at the great white throne judgment. Quote, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast in to the lake of fire. Now this is the judgment which attends the second resurrection. These are the resurrected dead who were not part of of the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has power. Their ultimate destiny is the lake of fire. Now, several books are involved in this judgment. One is the book of life. This book is consulted to verify that they have not trusted in Christ and therefore must stand before God on their own merit. Since the books which record their works will indicate the presence of sin in their lives and that they have not been credited with the righteousness of Christ by trusting in him, they have a major problem. They stand condemned as sinners before a holy God and are now without recourse. And then we see the books. These books record their life's works. Every good and bad deed of every moment of their life prior to death is recorded in these books. The degree of punishment is based upon their works but there is no possibility of rescue from the lake of fire, which awaits because their name fails to appear in the book of life. Now God is a just God and will provide unbelievers what they so frequently say they desire, the opportunity to be judged by their own merit. Their merit, falling short of perfection and lacking the covering of Christ, will result in just condemnation by degrees in the lake of fire. They will realize too late that God does not grade on a curve. So when are the names written in the book of life? Well, several passages indicate that the names of the redeemed are written in the book while they are still alive prior to death, such as Luke 10 verse 20 and Philippians 4 3. An additional passage indicates that the names of those who worship the beast were never recorded in the book. Quote, the beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and, is, and yet is. Revelation 17 verse 8. Now the phrase from the foundation of the world can be understood as describing the book or the names written emphasizing that either the book of life itself existed from the foundation of the world or that the names have been absent since then. If the former is true, the verse may only be conveying that the book itself existed from the foundation of the world. If the latter is true, the verse could imply that the names of the redeemed were written from the foundation of the world. This latter meaning appears to be compatible with what is revealed concerning the election of the believer which took place before the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1, 4. 
When we take these facts all together, they indicate that number one, the book of life existed before the foundation of the world. And number two, according to the eternal purpose of God, the names of the redeemed were written in the book before the foundation of the world, whereas the names of the beast worshipers were omitted. Having established that the names of the redeemed appear to have been recorded in the book of the time of their election, Ephesians 1.4, but that the names of the beast worshipers were not, we encounter a difficulty. Certain passages imply that names are blotted out from the book. But we've just seen that the names of the beast worshipers were not written in the book, so who is it that is being blotted out? If it were the redeemed that could be blotted out, then how does this square with the security of the believer? Well, I believe the solution to this predicament, attending the various passages regarding the book of life, generally results in the proposal that Scripture describes at least two and as many as three books associated with life. Number one, the book of the living. This is a book which records all those who attain a long life physically. Being blotted out of this book results in premature physical death. You could see Psalm 69 verse 28 or Exodus 32, 32. Number two is the book of life, a book which records the name of every individual ever born. Those who fail to exercise faith prior to death are blotted out of the book. Being blotted out of this book results in spiritual death and eternal damnation. Number three, the book of life of the Lamb, a book which records only those individuals who are predestined to salvation. None of the names written in this book is ever blotted out. Now also consider the context of Revelation 3.5. The church at Sardis had a name and likely had an official role containing the names of those who attended, yet it was dead. Jesus directs the church members to be concerned whether they are in the book of life rather than the church role. In those days, city officials would erase names of the undesirable people from their roles. So the audience would have understood the context in which Jesus was reproving them. The Bible says in Revelation 13 verse 8, All who dwell on the earth will worship him, everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slain. These are called earth dwellers in Revelation. Now consider these facts about the earth dwellers. They directly worship Satan himself, Revelation 13, verse 4. They worship the beast who claims to be God, 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. They are provided with overwhelming evidence of God's existence, Revelation 6. They are afforded the benefit of hearing the gospel message from an angel, Revelation 14. They are uniquely warned of the consequences of taking the mark by another angel, Revelation 14, verse 9. They continue in steadfast rebellion, all the while blaspheming God, Revelation 16, verse 9. Scripture uniquely records the irredeemable status of those who venture to take the mark of the beast and the special status of those who resist in Revelation 14. Their unique irredeemable status is seen in God sending upon them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. The serious nature of of their worship of the beast can be seen in the unique treatment which they share with the beast and the false prophet who deceives them to worship the beast. The beast and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire without the opportunity of judgment at the great white throne. They are cast directly into the lake of fire at the second coming. See Revelation 19 verse 20. Following Christ's return, the goats among the nations the non-believing, beast worshipers who survived the tribulation are sent into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels, Matthew 25, verse 31. Their treatment appears to differ from the rest of the unsaved who are resurrected after the thousand-year kingdom to stand in judgment before the great white throne prior to being cast in the lake of fire. Now, perhaps divine disgust for this ultimate global expression of human idolatry and blasphemy at the end of history will be the occasion 
for the total omission of any record of these individuals, the earth dwellers at the end. So in conclusion, brothers and sisters, we know that those who are saved cannot be blotted out. The beast worshippers during the tribulation were never written in the book. So it seems reasonable to conclude that those whose names are blotted out of the book of life contain all the unsaved of human history. How tragic indeed.